Good to see you. Here I am at the Hacksmith Rig. <laughs> good name, actually. What would you call it? Would you call it the Hacksmith Rig? It's like a blacksmith. Yeah, that, is a, that, is, that is a pretty good name. Uh, the shop itself has been around since, I think, the 80s. It was originally built for a uh, trucker. That's why it's got the massive door. If we ever wanted to pull a big transport truck in here, we hypothetically could. Or yeah. maybe a big boat or a giant mech. I don't know. I'm trying to think if it's as big as I thought it was going to be or as small. Because most people that come into my shed was like, oh, it's tiny. Yeah. But it's, it's, all, it's all the wide angle. But yeah, we brought in all the racking and whatnot, so we got some storage space. Got a furnace in here now, air conditioner too. Just yeah. got that installed like two days ago. I saw, I saw that <laughs> on your Twitter or whatever it was. Yeah, Instagram. so um, yeah. It's, it's work. we can work in here now. Yeah, it gets it, pretty hot, it, yeah. That's what I was going to say, it does get pretty hot here. <laughs> it was funny, when I was in London just like a month ago, hottest like time in London ever, it was like 35 yeah. Celsius, I'm just like, what? Yeah, <laughs> What's I've going on here? Yeah, I've some pretty good weather actually. Yeah. But, uh, but no, it's all good. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, this thing's fun. Uh, okay, made so a turret right, chair. You've got your robot. Yeah, yeah the, the robot. robot. Is that how it's it's going to become a statue. statue. We're going to give it a fresh coat of paint and stick it on the front lawn or something. Spot. See how much we can piss off the neighbors. Can you move it and put it into... You know, um, we could, yeah. Um, so it's, it's geared a lot, so you can actually lift it. But it is heavy as shit. <laughs> this, this whole thing actually only had a payload of about 35 kilograms, so... Not that strong, but it was built in 1990, so it's crazy thinking about it because this would have been a couple million dollars back then. We paid 500 bucks for it, which is less than its scrap metal value. See, I think if I had a workshop this big, I'd constantly be bringing home stuff. Yeah, we, we end up doing that. Whereas I have to be quite uh, strict now because like, people will ring me up, go, oh, we've got this, and I'm like, I really want that, but I've got nowhere to put it. Cool. So we're packing up some of our projects because we're actually Heading off to the US end of the month, uh, Tormach, the company that gave us the CNC machine. Yeah. Uh, they're bringing some of their brand ambassadors out to just do a show and tell and whatnot. So, cool. Captain America Shield, uh, yeah. grappling hook gun. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. It's probably one of my favorite things you've done, actually. It's a bit heavy. No, yeah, but you know, <laughs> it works well, though, doesn't it? The worm dropping thing is a good idea. It's the thing is that people don't realize, though, is to pull, you, pull yourself up, it's actually quite physically demanding, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, how the Batman does it in the films is uh, just not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> so I remember the film when I first did my grappling hook, and I was thinking, oh, I'll just hold my arm. Up. Yeah. And so it's like, whoop. Hence why I had to like, tie myself to my belt. Yeah. But, uh, but no, this, this is pretty cool. We learned a lot of lessons about designing this. Yeah. Um, I want to do the Just Cause grappling hook. So if I can have that on the wrist, a bit bigger again, obviously, yeah, but it, um, reality, it would be, is this be pretty cool. Um, this is actually uh, a composite uh, plastic, so it's actually uh, fiber reinforced. That, that was supposed to be a prototype. We were going to make it out of aluminum, and then it just kind of stayed. It worked. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Why remake it if it works? Yeah, I've had some of my like the uh, the rubbish versions. I slapped together quickly. Yeah. Just try and see if it works. Just it works use whatever. Better than the fine machine. <laughs> and it's like, I don't understand this. That one should, you know, shouldn't work. Yeah, that's well. funny how that works. And it's brilliant when I've made it keeps jamming up or whatever. Yeah, that's quite funky stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Ian, you, you want, want to grab some batteries for Baja? Yeah. So, so this, this thing, thing cool. if yeah, you happen to have any more time, we can set up a time to go to the farmer's field and yeah, have a bit of a remote control. control. Oh, well, I see you. <laughs> How fast is this thing going? Uh, when we built it, it was in the winter, so we kept spinning out in the snow, and uh, after a little battery explosion not so long ago, we're missing the connectors, so we don't actually have enough battery connectors right now to plug it all in properly. They're supposed to be coming in the mail soon. We're thinking it can probably do at least like 80, 90. Um, I think the current gearing I got it up to 70. 70 on the Kilo road? Are we on about kilometers? Yeah. Yeah, because you're all kilometers over here, aren't you? Oh, your speed limits are way too slow. Yeah. I've had three speeding tickets <laughs> since I've finished. But the <laughs> funny thing is, like the cop, the cop pulled me up and he's like, why are you doing 150 coming on the slip road sort of thing? And um, and I was like, oh, sorry, mate, just, you know. <laughs> I didn't really have an answer. <laughs> this guy kind of struck me down. So, no, not that bad. It just never go 50 over, because the cops can take your car and impound it. Well, it's a high which car. Is a, sorry? It's a high car. <laughs> <laughs> it would still probably be a bit yeah, of a so headache. The production company of which I'm doing stuff at here would probably not, very, not be too happy with me. But, you know, he let, he let me off. Oh, not plugged in. So right joystick for steering, and Ian's still plugging in the uh, power, I think. Because I thought about doing this with a with a go kart, but if 
it was getting it so it wasn't just yeah. you know what I mean? So it wasn't just, you know, full right, Flip. full right, full left. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta give it power. Okay. And just keep that joystick down for now. I was testing it, I heard like some. Oh, yeah, because if, uh, yeah. if it loses. It, it, it has a spell safe now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then. Uh, I quite like these LED bars, actually. Yeah. Cl close cool. your eyes. <laughs> What's kind of fun is we just hooked it up to a keypad so you can turn on all the lights. Yeah, just like that. It's a bit like the, um, what's that closing counter of the third kind that they tried to do the... Yeah! <laughs> 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 I made a little magnetic gift for you. Oh, thank you very much. So I can hang that up in the shop and advertise your channel. A little hacksmith logo. <laughs> I can, I, I can use this to hold the speeding fines <laughs> onto something, because that's, that's what I'm taking back from Canada. Speeding <laughs> fines and, uh, and various bits and bobs. Oh, cheers up, boys. Anyway, yeah, I'll set that so I don't... Uh... I used to have a top pocket in my old shirt, but the new ones... Uh-uh. So changing and changing the uh, yeah, the outfit. Or just keep wrecking. <laughs> so, just just uh, fit in that pocket. Slick pocket. That's pretty yeah. huge. Yeah. It's good, it's good. Our battery boxes are 50 cal ammo cases. Why not? But then we uh, laser engrave the, the specs on it. It's <laughs> nice touch. Yeah. Good things like that. I like the, um, the case you made for your grapple box. Yeah, the original one. Yeah. We've been meaning to like do that more and more, so it's just like, because we're, we're trying to go for like the Lu Lucius, bleh, Lucius Fox, like yeah, Batman. Yeah, it makes it look things more Batman stuff. It puts a bit of jazz on it, makes yeah. it look proper. Um, so we just built a new welding table, got all the water jet cuts, we can have fixtures. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of cool. Kind of forgot how heavy this plate would be, but downdraft and above. That's cool. Yeah. And then a um, little trusty mill. Nice old lathe. Yeah, I'll be a good old lathe. <laughs> and then uh, the Tormach, which has been pretty awesome. It's let us do some pretty cool stuff. It's quite a good size, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, our battery cabinet, very fire safe. Maybe not. <laughs> I, mean, I got some fishing line or something, which is supposed to be rated for like twice my body weight. Yeah. And I just literally put my foot on it and it just snapped. Yeah. yeah. The, the biggest, biggest issue is if you have any actual like speed going down. down your weight becomes two, three times yeah, you've got, like, super the, fast. Uh, and then similarly, we've used 555 paracord, which is just 550 pounds, and it's been stronger than the 1,000 pound Kevlar sometimes. And we're just like, what? Which, which, is she doing it? Yeah. Yeah. He's going for it. Looking up a go. This is good ending to here. We got halfway down the Gardner Expressway, what it's called, and thought, oh no, I've got any money on me. None of my cars work out here. I'm not sure if I've got enough fuel. I think I've got sixteen dollars in my pocket, which should just about top me up to get there. We can loan you twenty years out. Yeah, no. I'm going to see him go first, just in case it does snap. Um, uh, would you mind? <laughs> oh my God, like that. That's real. He's, He's got, got three, three so far. Me, me uh, yeah, Eli from Z Not Alpha, and now you. <laughs> They are, I have the worst signature ever. Yeah, you could right? probably forge that yourself, but that's all good. Thank Look you. Look here, Bogdan. You happy now? I am. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's see how this goes. We probably shouldn't stand underneath it. <laughs> so you really got to give her if you want to actually make it into the princess castle. The prince. Yeah, how'd you go? What's your that? It's already here. It's already here. It's, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. Whatever. All the floorboards are uh, What rotten. the hacksmith does off camera. <laughs> I suppose I should have a go on this now. Didn't I? <laughs> Please don't snap. <laughs> My head isn't doing it. There we go. Pretty cool. The stretch is kind of unnerving, isn't it? Yeah. The stretch is good, it actually means less less tension on the, the rope. <laughs> it's cool having a zip line in your garden though. Eh? 
Well, what's the best way to do it? Just leg it up, up it to it. It helps to be pretty tall. Yeah, here you are, you six foot six <laughs> monster. <laughs> So, so we're planning on upgrading this, actually putting, putting a metal cable in. Yeah. Uh, there's a big yeah. dead tree right next to the Princess Castle, so we can go up quite a bit higher, we're thinking. Yeah. And what we're thinking would be really cool is if we did two-stage. So you go down, and then you can come back on a second zip line from that tree down to maybe the neighborhood. Oh, so you kind of like jump from one to the other? Yeah, something like that. That's quite cool. <laughs> and we might put a rock climbing wall here, and then make it even taller. <laughs> Why not? I keep on I mean, you must get it as well for our homemade roller coasters and stuff. <laughs> But my neighbours are just not going to have that. <laughs> we, we, we've surprisingly had like pretty good luck with the neighbours. We haven't had really a single complaint. I mean, someone called the fire department on us like a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> our, our mistake was being responsible and using a fire extinguisher to put it out. Because then all the smoke came out and they're like, oh no, the garage is on fire. So, but yeah, beyond that, we haven't actually had any complaints. So. I guess we'll just keep building until that happens. You've got quite, I suppose, it's quite soundproof, this place. It's pretty, it's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, you see, mine's, I mean, mine's not too bad, but it's right outside the back door. Yeah. And also, the neighbours, like, uh, they're landing, they're, like, upstairs window, like, overlooks it. Right, at, yeah. So. Have you gotten many complaints from them? Or? They're all right. Yeah. They're all right. Um, <laughs> it depends what day you catch them on. Yeah, that's depends a good point. Depends what the missus is, I think. <laughs> she's, she's in it. It's different kind of fish. But, yeah. Uh, we really lucked out with our main neighbor because um, he's the one who works for the electric motor company. Is that Stan? Sometimes Stan, older guy, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's his barn. He's got a little machine shop in there. We trade tools all the time. Um, he's got a big trailer. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you get people interested, they don't give you any answer. They just get in to help you. More than anything. Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of weird because like when, when you first when I first started, you'd like try and get stuff off people, and be a bit, but then once they find out who you are, a bit and later, you. what you do, and it's like just trying to just chuck his stuff at you. And it's like, well, it would have been nice if you'd have helped me before. Sort of <laughs> yeah. Also, out, yeah, yeah, let's show you this. Because you have an upstairs. Excellent. Have you slept too much? Then? Uh, you don't answer that. You're the, you're the, uh, I have actually. It's just uh, we, we spent so much money building it, and then we bought a used air conditioner off the GG and had some issues with it. And then uh, we can turn on the oxygen, right? There we go. I presume this is medical grade. You know, the funny thing is, it's it's the same oxygen. It's just. <laughs> So your paramotors, how many horsepower were they? 45, I think. 45? 45. So, so this, this is 16? 10 kilowatts. Yeah. So, so about 15, 16. 16. There's 10 kilowatts in, not out though. Yeah, the, the, the hover bike was on the limit of not working. It, and it's crazy, like just the, you know, like the little fuel reservoir on it. It was like a, was like a little five liter. Yeah. Just like a stream wash bottle, basically. The difference between that being half full and quarter full made a difference. <laughs> like if I took the keys out of my pocket, it made a difference. It was literally on the limit and not working. breakfast so that day. Like that whole video, I didn't have any underwear on or anything like that. It was a shirt tie and a pair of, pair of shorts, no socks, I don't um. think, or like minimal socks sort of things, all that. Once the fuel started to burn around, it just it worked better. And you know, I mean, what's that? It must have been, it's fractions of, of weight, isn't it? Yeah. So, and, it, and it would get up. And in the windy conditions as well, it worked better in the wind because it got rid of the prop wash. Oh, uh, yeah. The prop wash, so the, the air that gets sucked down and blown around, it gets like kind of, it loops round and then gets sucked back into it again. Whereas on a windy day, that wouldn't happen. And then it, and then it worked better. But then it used to just, as soon as it left the ground, it did its own thing. Which is what it did anyway. It breaks and, and both the throttles were brake levers. You have to tell yourself to turn the back one off first so the arse drop down and oh. skid down and then come to stop like that. But while you're trying to do balancing, look at cameras and stuff like that, it's just too much for me to compute. So half the time I'd let go of the wrong one and then the nose would dive and then we'd end up smashing all the blades up. And stuff. Jeez. Yeah, how, many, how many blades did you go through? About 10 sets. How much were those? How much are those blades? Four hundred pounds a set. Just smashed so many up. <laughs> so some of them was needlessly. Yeah. Some of them was just because you know I didn't. It's too cold. It happens. Uh, but, um, but yeah. Sorry, Ford. I don't think they. Uh, I think they care in the end because it's. Yeah. It did very well. One million views. They're not going to be arguing with that. I think. So, so any plans for uh, Reb Two? 
Yeah, I'd like to do one at some point, definitely. You think electric, maybe? I'm, I don't know. I'd like to stick with motors. The thing is, you see, because I'm not... You've, you've got bogged in here. We can do all the old <laughs> computer tech and stuff. Whereas, uh, I, I like to keep it simple. It's weird, actually. I mean, I lucked in with when I did mine, because about a couple of months later, quite a few... The, the actual electric ones. ones? Yeah, better ones, to be yeah. fair, came out. And I thought... Like, they're, they're actually made by real companies. Yeah. yeah. Teams, teams of engineers. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, a guy in his garage. <laughs> so, the first one I made was like... It, it had all like rails and everything on it, and it, you know, in theory, too heavy. You should have lifted, in theory. But I just remember getting it on the lawn and just, and it just was nothing. We were just there hacking it off. And it's been thinking, oh, it took me ages to make this. We just saw it bits <laughs> off to, you know, to get back to something which probably could have done it, yeah. you know, like half a day or whatever. But they are. You live and learn. It's all good fun. Yeah. So what's, what are you doing then? Doing a bit of design. Is that this place here? Yeah. That's yeah. A good job. Cool. So this is one of our uh, high school interns, Brad, and he's uh, learning some 3D CAD and making us a 3D model of the shop. Cool. Why not? Then we got our army of 3D printers, just like uh, James Bruton, Lulzbot's been... Yeah, they've, um, I got an email from them ages ago, but again, I'd, it's, uh, I could stick one of them in the bunker, really, because, I mean, they're not that big, so potentially I might, I might get hold of one. The thing is, though, I'm rubbish on computers. It would take me just as long to draw it, and we'll be trying to make one out of it. The beauty is, some websites do a great job at analysis. Yeah, these are quite funny. They're like little sea monsters, isn't they? Yeah. But there's a lot of sites out there that um, you can get 3D models of like practically everything. Yeah. There's one site, uh, it's a really big US manufacturer of like all parts for engineering. It's called McMaster Car. Yeah. And they hired a whole bunch of co-op students one year to make 3D models of everything they sell. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, <laughs> for a lot of the stuff, you can like download them all and then print it. Yeah. And depending on what you're making, obviously. But uh, it's amazing because you can literally just drag and drop all these components that they've already made for you, and you just throw it together in a model. So um, we use that to cut down design time a lot for a lot of the things we do, and it's it's pretty awesome that way. But then. More 3D printers under here. <laughs> we've got four of the Lulz bots, and then we've got the Cadillac of 3D printers. This is uh, called the Mark II. Um, so it actually prints embedded carbon fiber inside the part. Oh, yeah. So it can actually make a, a composite part. This one's fiberglass embedded, but you can kind of see the strands around the edge. So it's super strong like that. Obviously, still weak like that. But depending on how you design the stuff, you can make some pretty awesome, awesome things. And then this, this company is actually coming out with a metal 3D printer with a decent build size, like a build size that big basically, and not that expensive to use, whereas like most metal 3D printers right now, you're looking at like half a million dollars to buy it, and then the material cost alone is just prohibitive. Um, that might be quite useful. Yeah. Might have one of them. So they give you that one? Yeah. Um, and that one's, this one's worth about 10 grand or so. So, I don't know, it's not. The, the neat thing about the metal printer is how it works is it's actually basically a regular printer. Yeah. It takes a metal fill fiber that's like 95% metal, 5% plastic polymer holding it together. Yeah. It prints it out, and then once you're done, you take it off, you put it in the oven, you melt the plastic out, yeah. you're left with a 95% solid part. Then you cover it in this like metal slurry, you it's bake it again, <laughs> it sucks it in, and you're left with like a 99.5% solid part, which for most things, again, is Fine. good enough. Humans are scary, aren't they? So, um, so you've got, actually got six then, yeah. six 3D printers. <laughs> uh, so we actually just got this last week. Uh, Hobby King sells them at yeah. 180 bucks. Any good? Actually pretty decent. Yeah. The, the only of course tiny bit, obviously. The Hobby King sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for, for 180 bucks, yeah, like pre-built, ready to go, you plug it in and it works. Um, so we're doing a review on that because I know a lot of our subscribers, they want to 3D print stuff, but like, yeah, those are like three grand each, these hundred bucks. And then uh, behind you is the laser cutter, which I've actually gotten so much use out of this thing. It was the first piece of equipment I really got. Yeah. Um, and it's really what actually allowed me to do this because I sold uh, laser engraved yeah, cutting boards on Etsy and whatnot. And that's how I paid the bills originally. But um, it's great for prototyping big parts, even for doing like steel projects. Um, like you cut out the template, make sure it works. If you got a plasma cutter, you cut out the template and then you use it as a template and you cut it out in the steel. We'd love to get an actual CNC plasma cutter. I think that's the next major thing that would like 
Bailey do one of them. Yeah. yeah. I thought about asking them for one of theirs, but... They're pretty big. Yeah, <laughs> I've got no space for it. This is a problem. I mean, I thought about putting some stuff in my garage, but then it's quite often I need to get through my garage. Right. Because they've built houses behind me now. I yeah. used to just drag stuff across the field and then bring it in over the hedge, which I can't do it anymore. Like the dodgem. The dodgem's actually quite big. Yeah. I think it's dodge dodgem's are, you know, you kind of <laughs> don't think they are, but then when you get it, oh, you know, that, that kind of went through the garage. If I had loads of this stuff in there, we'd have to wheel it all out, you know, get something through and then wheel it all back in again. I mean, I've just, I've got like a big slip roller now from Bailey, and that kind of just tucks up underneath the steel wrap. Yeah. I've got to get a car through for the next project, so I think that's, oh, yeah. we're going to have to, uh, <laughs> You have to get that out again. It's alright, but it's like 250 kilos. Like me and Rick can only just pick it up. Sort of thing. Because I looked at it in the, in the thing. Oh, yeah, that'll be alright. That'll fit under the shelf. And of course, they turn up and it's like four people. I come in at half. I thought about this. I'm like, this, this thing's kind of stuck up here now. Yeah. Uh, we use a forklift to get it up here and then forklift's long gone. So. Oh, right. <laughs> no, well, yeah, you, you, you got plenty of space. We're trying to make. We have a plasma kind of like a new one. Yeah. We bought a CNC from X Carve that we don't use because we bought a Tormach. But. It uses an Arduino to actually control the entire thing, and the uh, electromagnetic radiator interference yeah. from the plasma cutter just kills the Arduino. It's crazy, just creating that arc. Everything, Everything within like five feet, feet electronics, like, like what's, what's going, going on? on? <laughs> just didn't, did not realize that when we started, and then it wasted quite a bit of time trying to make it work, <laughs> and then we're just like, well, oh, we, put, we put a shooting <laughs> across everything, we built a Faraday cage for it, and then it just wouldn't work. We worked having like a controller as well. Yeah. Excellent. Would you mind if we got a picture? No, of course not. Selfie. Where, where would we be? Should we go in front of this? Yeah, let's go there. Because that's your, that's your start. Right? <laughs> it's your starting video, isn't it? Bogdan, take a selfie over there. Oh, well, look, you even have a script. Shh. <laughs> Jeez, he's got a script. <laughs> you don't know, script things here. <laughs> yeah, and you want to grab a picture? How do you normally start it? I can't think now. Can... I usually use my hands yeah. a lot. I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you then? 19. You mean, what, you mean university or college or something? Yeah, I'm going to second year. Spiff it off. The future is YouTube. Yeah. I'm looking at the video camera. Uh, look at the phone camera. Phone okay. camera? Well, because you told me to take a picture. Yeah, but I want a picture by myself afterwards. Oh, so. what's this? Fine. Yeah, let me let me <laughs> Let's do these first. Do, do, yeah, do one on my, my camera. And there we are, coming up next on the Hacksmith channel, something else. I don't know what's coming up next. What is it, your 3D printer of it? Uh, Sorry again? Sorry? Sorry again? Uh, the laser, laser bazooka, bazooka, maybe. Don't Some. worry about it, he'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know what I actually. This is, this is the, you know, <laughs> we're normally at the start of the video here, and there's all the Patreon stuff that he goes on about with the clicks for the next video. Got his Captain America shield, all his other previous projects. It's all it. And I am at the moment, briefly. See you later, Hacksmith Channel. See you. You too. See you later, people. Did you want some gas money? Yeah.